the Chinese space program has announced that they are ready to leave their bubble of isolation behind and start working in collaboration with the nations of the world on projects that range from low Earth orbit to the moon and far beyond. For the longest time, we had two pace setters in the space race that the smaller programs could fall in behind, either the United States or Russia. If you were a nation that didn't have billions of excess dollars to spend on developing your own fleet of rockets and launch systems, but still had aspirations for conducting outer space research, then you would need to piggyback off of a major player to accomplish that. And particularly if you wanted to get a project into the ISS or anywhere near the moon or deep space, then you'd need to either link up with the Americans or the Russians. But times have changed. The Russians have fallen out of favor on the global stage for obvious reasons, but there's more to it than that. The Russian space program was stagnant for decades. The biggest advantage they held was a crew rated launcher and spacecraft, but the moment that SpaceX was able to fly human beings into orbit with the Falcon 9 and Dragon capsule and then bring them home safely, that's what really put an end to Russia's time at the head of the pack. And now, China has essentially scrubbed the name Russia from their outer space roadmap. They've put themselves out there as a new opportunity for developing space programs to fill the gap left by Roscosmos and reach for the stars. Under the watchful eye of the Chinese, of course. There's no free lunch in spaceflight, but there are some amazing possibilities out there. This is the Space Race. This new line of thinking was spurred on by China's recent involvement with the International Astronautical Congress in Paris, France. A panel discussion titled International Cooperation Prospects on China Lunar and Deep Space Exploration Program was held on September 21st that included China's Deputy Director of Lunar Exploration and the General Director of their National Space Science Center. The Chinese begin by pointing out that a fascination with outer space has been a pillar of their society for thousands of years. The Chinese named their interstellar exploration program, Tianwen, after a verse by one of China's most distinguished poets, Qu Yuan, who lived 2300 years ago. A line from that poem, which translates as heavenly questions, reads, Where is the sun, the moon, and those stars? The Chinese are going out in search of those answers, and they are looking for partners who'd like to come along with them. The Chinese officials stated that they were open to proposals beginning with the Chang'e 7 Lunar South Pole landing, which is scheduled for launch sometime in the second half of this decade. Officials reminded us that the Chang'e 6 trip to the far side of the moon already features participation from Sweden and ESA in the form of a negative ion detector, an Italian retroflector, a French radon instrument, a Pakistani CubeSat named iCubeQ, and a small rover from the UAE. So this isn't necessarily a brand new concept, but it is the first time we've seen the Chinese openly solicit for international partners. Things got really interesting when the Chinese started opening up about their future deep space missions. Tianwen-1 already put a rover on the surface of Mars. Now, Tianwen-2, they plan to complete a sample return mission from a near-Earth asteroid and then send the spacecraft further on to visit a comet in the solar system's main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. That is scheduled for 2025. Tianwen-3 is a Mars sample return mission, likely to happen around 2028. This is very likely to be the first time that rock from Mars is brought back to the Earth, a truly historic mission. The depth and variety of those samples will not be as comprehensive as what NASA is currently doing with their own Mars rover, but that also means that it's going to take them a lot longer to get those samples collected and transported. Tianwen-4 is where things get crazy. This is a mission that we had never heard detailed before, but the Chinese are planning a two-for-one planetary observation mission to the outer solar system. A Long March 5 rocket will send a payload of twin spacecraft on a roundabout path to deep space, using a gravity assist around both Venus and the Earth to slingshot the craft towards the outer planets. 
The larger of the two will set course for Jupiter, while the second will target Uranus. The main spacecraft will spend time investigating the Jupiter system, and will eventually settle into orbit around the moon Callisto for a detailed observation of the outermost Galilean moon. The smaller spacecraft, which will still carry a mass on the order of a few hundred kilograms, will make the longer voyage to Uranus, where it will conduct a flyby observation. The Chinese added that there might also be an opportunity for this craft to fly by a deep space asteroid on its journey. Officials stated that their particular scientific goals for these interstellar missions are still under consideration and possibly even open to suggestion. Also, just wanted to let you know about our Discord server. We've got over 1,500 members and host regular live watch parties within the community. We have some big events coming up for the first Starship launch, Artemis launch, and Tesla AI day. So if you aren't already, join our Discord server using the link in the description. Probably the most striking section of the discussion revolved around China's aspirations for a moon base. We've known for a long time that they have plans for what they call the International Lunar Research Station, and for years, we had always heard it introduced as a partnership between China and Russia. But during this most recent presentation, the elephant in the room was not mentioned. Russian involvement in the project was scrubbed clean. Now, like we mentioned off the top, it's highly unlikely that the Russians were ever going to be a major contributor to any advanced aerospace mission. They've just not been innovating on the same level as the Chinese or even other smaller nations like Japan or India. So we always knew the Chinese were the ones doing the heavy lifting here anyways. The International Lunar Research Station is a mega project envisioning the establishment of a permanent robotic installation at the moon's south pole, which can later transition to a human-occupied moon base sometime in the 2030s. This has been a point of contention, mostly between NASA's top leadership and the Chinese officials. Over the summer, NASA's administrator Bill Nelson warned that China would establish their presence on the moon and then prohibit other nations from joining them. And even just three days prior to the Chinese presentation, Nelson was saying that China was not interested in cooperation. He said, quote, There has to be an openness there, and that has not been forthcoming. And now, on the surface at least, it would appear that the Chinese are making an active effort to debunk Nelson's rhetoric. On the one hand, we have the head of NASA, who, honestly, to me at least, sounds like a bit of an idiot every time he opens his mouth, especially after the Artemis 1 debacle. He's more like an infomercial salesman than a space expert. It's baffling. But anyway, he's beating the drum of fear that China is this aggressive, isolationist nation looking to conquer and claim outer space only for themselves. On the other hand, this is how the Chinese build their own presentation. Openness, cooperation, and win-win are always the most important principles in the international cooperation of China's deep space exploration. China National Space Administration will introduce China's future plans and cooperation opportunities in lunar and deep space exploration in this GNF event, and will together with mission designer, chief scientist, and international experts discuss the prospects of international cooperation. So, we have two very conflicting narratives here, and I don't think we should fully trust either of them, but we do see China making a pretty compelling case for themselves, and we would not be the least bit surprised to see a few national space programs taking them up on this offer for collaboration. On a somewhat related note, work is currently underway at Wenchang Spaceport to finalize the launch of China's third module for the Tiangong Space Station. The Mengtian research module is slated for launch in early October and will complete the first phase of the Chinese station. The three modules of the Tiangong will have been deployed over a span of just 18 months, the first large-scale space station constructed since the ISS was deployed over 20 years ago. Not only is the ISS long past its original expiration date, 
we now have this painfully awkward and low-key terrifying situation where the station's two key partners are teetering on the edge of their bloody proxy war escalating into an active military conflict. So, if I had the choice of either going there or going to the Tiangong, hands down, choosing Tiangong every day of the week. And again, I think a lot of these other nations will agree. Chinese Taikonauts recently completed their first spacewalk from the Tiangong Wentian airlock on September 1st and tested the station's robotic arm for the first time. So there's not much that the ISS has to offer that Tiangong can't match or even do better. I mean, just look at the ISS. It's a rat's nest of technology that spans more than two decades, while Tiangong is entirely clean, modern systems and design. Now, that's not to echo NASA's paranoia that China is going to take over everything and become a monolithic space empire. I just don't see what's in it for them if they were to do that. But if they are serious about presenting themselves as a new option for collaboration in outer space research and exploration, then they are already presenting a much more appealing and ambitious space program than the Russians ever could. And in many regards, they are offering some potential future opportunities that the Americans can't match either. So, in a race where there are few leaders and many followers, it's looking like the Chinese are about to gather a lot of strength behind them. And that sets up for a very interesting new dynamic in the future. Is Bill Nelson right, or is he just another in the parade of senile old men who don't even know where they are, yet are somehow in charge of everything? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.